Mr. Ken Cobley, President and CEO of the Alberta Chambers of Commerce. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, thank you for this interview. Anytime. Okay. Well, sir, just a couple of questions about your the overview on Alberta's economy. Mm -hmm. Well, first things, uh, outlook for the business environment and the economy over the next year or two. Yeah. What is the Chamber's view on the province's uh, economy? You know, I think the economy is, is very positive. Uh, I mean, the Alberta economy is the only thing that's really keeping the rest of Canada outside of a recession. Uh, so I think it's very positive. Certainly there are some sectors that are going through some very difficult times at this point. Uh, lumber, for example. Uh, any any um, uh, rural area that's dependent on lumber is suffering. Uh, we have a, a major issue right now with uh, both beef and pork producers. Uh, their input costs are, are very high, and uh, what they're getting at the end of the day for their for their produce is is low. Uh, so we have those particular sectors that that. Uh, to name a few that need to be addressed. Um, the rest of the, of the economy, I think, is just chugging right along. Uh, we tend to do very well whenever there is a, a high price in, in oil and natural gas, and certainly today it closed or opened at $128 a barrel. Um, so I think uh, the outlook for the predictable future is probably very good for the province. Well, there's a lot of pressure from environmental groups to slow down the development of mm -hmm. the oil sands um, projects. Do you think this is serious enough to dampen the economic outlook for the province? Well, you know, I think, uh, to be honest, with a, lo a lot of businesses, um, individuals are already working flat out uh, 14, 16 hours a day, and uh, maybe some businesses would in fact welcome a little bit of a slowdown, uh, just so that they can catch their breath and regroup. Um, I think uh, the the pressures to develop the oil sands, to develop any uh, oil and natural gas plays right now, uh, to a large degree, are uh, are probably outside of the hands of the province of Alberta. Mm -hmm. uh, we're depending on world markets, and uh, we're, we're directly affected by the world market and the world demand for oil and natural gas. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone is now jumping on board with these high oil price predictions. Yep. Two hundred dollars uh, being uh, thrown about quite freely. Will two hundred dollars oil hurt or help the province? Well, I guess from the provincial treasury's point of view, uh, if for every dollar that oil goes up per barrel, the provincial treasury uh, pulls in an extra hundred and fifty million dollars. Um, so I guess from the point of view of of dollars collected by the provincial treasury, it would be positive. From the point of view of the average Albertan who's there, uh, who has to buy uh, buy fuel uh, for his commute every day. Uh, has to buy food, has to buy basically any product uh, that we consume in this province, there's a factor of transportation costs in there. And uh, I mean, if, if we're talking going to $200 a barrel, we probably would be talking uh, uh, a price per liter topping out at, at two bucks uh, a liter. Mm -hmm. And that would be uh, very costly for the average Albertan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're already, uh, I just followed a, a story on CNN um, a couple of days ago where they were interviewing some folks in uh, Tennessee who were um, basically making a choice between gas to fuel up their vehicles to do their commute to work or uh, food. So I think, uh, I think it's, it would have a very, diff difficult, uh, very difficult impact on uh, individual Albertans. It would be positive from the point of view of what the province is pulling in, but I think negative on people's cost of living. What about for your members, the Chamber of Commerce uh, members, uh, uh, the small businesses, are they going to suffer? Well, certainly they're consumers of product just like, just like uh, everyday Albertans. Uh, the things that they buy for their businesses um, have to be transported. Um, there is only so much that you can pass on to your customer. Um, I mean, we, we all uh, have heard stories about, you know, the price of bread, uh, you know, um, the price of popcorn, for example, in the uh, in uh, Cineplex Odeons just went up uh, because of the transportation costs and the increased cost of corn. Um, businesses will tend to hold off on their price adjustments. There comes a point where um, those, those prices have to be passed on to the consumer which then, uh, I guess, has a, a dampening trend on where the economy goes. But I think overall, your know, members will actually benefit from this uh, high oil price environment. I mean, I don't yeah. think we're going to see uh, Albertan businesses going down, right? I mean, we, we, I mean, we see what's happening in the, in the, in the U.S. 
and small businesses are closing up. Yep. Yeah. You know, they're just not able to, uh, to take well, the punch. You know what? There's some potential for that. You know, there there certainly is some potential for for businesses to be closing down uh, with high, high oil prices. Uh, if they're, I mean, if they're not uh, part of the oil and gas sector and and, and making the dollars from that, um, there comes a point where you know there's a it's a it's almost a perfect storm. You have increased labor costs, you have increased input costs, um, and you have a, a public who has. Uh, Perhaps less of a disposable income to buy the product that you're that you're selling. So uh, you know, I wouldn't estimate the potential of losing some businesses over this. One other issue facing Alberta now is uh, labor. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, everyone is yep. screaming for a shortage of labor, and uh, they are moved by the government to go out of um, to the to other countries mm -hmm. to bring in uh, uh, labor yep. to meet those shortages. On the other hand, we've seen. Uh, Migration from other countries uh, into Alberta at, at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. So, why aren't we using the people already here? Yeah. Why, why are we going out to get? New well, you know, I think it's a combination. The, the, our birth rates simply are not enough to replenish the number of individuals, and traditionally, our birth rates have never been enough to replenish the number of individuals who are retiring. Uh, Statistics Canada suggests that by the year 2010, the province of Alberta will have a, sh a shortage, in other words, job vacancies, in excess of 100,000 jobs that will not be filled. Uh, certainly we as a country, you know, we were, although Alberta was the first one to experience it, it's now moved right across the country. And we need to uh, uh, do a couple things. Certainly we need to uh, expand uh, our share of folks coming in from other countries. We need to, um, I guess, utilize underemployed uh, sectors of the population, such as our First Nations people, um, as far as proper training. And, and more critically, when we have folks coming to our, to our country, from another country, we need to ensure that the policies and procedures are in place to recognize their foreign credentials, so that when they think that they're coming to country, this country to work as an engineer, to work as a welder. They need to have uh, a good feeling that when they get to this country that their credentials are in fact going to be recognized and they'll be able to work in the field that they're in fact trained for. Right. And we haven't done a good job of that so far.